Holy crap, is the world screwed up? I mean, it is, it's not going well, people. I mean, 2021 seems to be a lot worse than even 2020 was. Uh, there's all sorts of disasters out there. You can sit back, you can watch the world burn and, and cry tears, or you can enjoy it a little bit. And that's what we're going to do today while we have the Stu Does America third, not quite annual, but seemingly way too much, like way more common than annual, Cancel Culture Olympics. We go through all of America and the world to find the best cases of cancel culture, people being canceled and destroyed for absolutely no reason at all, and we bring them to you every single time we do a new Cancel Culture Olympics. Why do I feel like we're gonna be at like Cancel Culture Olympics 80 by the end of the year? I don't know. Let's get to the bronze medal. The bronze medal comes from our friend Brian Lilly up in Canada. Brian uh, brings us the story of a mother-daughter team, Kelly Childs and Aaron Weatherby. They opened up a uh, bakery in uh, Burlington, Ontario, selling plant-based, gluten-free, peanut-free, dairy-free, egg-free, and vegan desserts. I mean, a lot of that would just been covered with vegan, but it's a little bit repetitive. That's not why they got canceled. Their website describes the bakery as, quote, an inclusive place where everyone can indulge guilt-free in any of their mouth-watering desserts. Sounds super mega woke, right? In 2014, they got a book deal with Penguin Random House to produce a book uh, with a bunch of recipes in there, and it sold really well. And so they got an extra book deal, another book, a second book. What a great triumph for a mother-daughter team in their vegan bakery. Unfortunately, on June 2nd, 2020, they went on their Instagram uh, account, and they posted the, the Blackout Tuesday thing that everyone was doing that day. And they posted a quote from Martin Luther King Jr. It said, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Apparently that wasn't, I don't know, if didn't hate white people enough or something. Uh, the quote had a black square on it. it. They did all the things they were supposed to do, got 1,200 likes on Instagram, but it also got some negative comments. Yes, uh, a very negative comments, accusing them of performative allyship, whatever the hell that means. Um, some said they were racist, homophobic, and had the wrong political beliefs. Lots of nasty personal comments. When they deactivated the comments, then they were accused of silencing black voices, which is not even, I mean, they silence all the voices. When you turn off the comments, that's kind of what happens. Uh, some of the comments came, however, from past employees, and according to the women, from accounts run by people who run competing vegan businesses in the area. This is like the Canadian vegan mafia. That's what happened here. What was the result of all of this? Well, you'll be shocked to hear the campaign was successful. The book deal was canceled. And uh, it, Penguin Random House actually claimed that Kelly and Aaron had engaged in conduct that reveals prejudice against black people, end quote. All of this for quoting Martin Luther King Jr. in honoring George Floyd. So congratulations to Kelly and Aaron. You have won the bronze medal in the third Stu Does America Cancel Culture Olympics. Let's go to the silver. This one is a complicated story. Let me bring you through it. Here is a photo, a, a, a picture that was tweeted. Photos have now emerged that Rachel Kirkconnell was at an antebellum plantation-themed fraternity formal in 2018. Who the hell is that person? I don't know. It's someone on The Bachelor, apparently. I don't know who it was, and I don't know much about them. However, just showing up to a, uh, an antebellum party and getting canceled for it, that doesn't get you on the cancel culture Olympics. That's nothing. The apology came thusly, however, from Kirk Connell. She said, at one point, I didn't recognize how offensive and racist my actions were, but that doesn't accuse them. To remind you, she went to a sorority party where she wore a nice dress. That's essentially what she did. I am sorry to the communities and individuals that my actions, this is the uh, Kirk Connell apology, by the way, uh, actions were harmed and offended. If you are a person who doesn't understand the offense in question, I ask you, I urge you, to learn from my mistakes and encourage you to use them as a teachable moment. Racial progress and unity are impossible without white accountability. Ah, it's such a great apology. I feel fantastic about it. Now, you might think, 
uh, you know, getting canceled for that. I mean, that's uh, what that's not a, it's not an Olympic event. Well, it goes further than that. The host of The Bachelor then did an interview about her going to a sorority party three years ago. And here's how that went. What are your thoughts about Rachel Kirkinell and the allegations attached to her? A couple of things. First and foremost, I don't know. Um, I haven't talked to Rachel about it. And, and this is, again, where we all need to have a little grace, a little understanding, a little compassion, because I've seen some stuff online. Grace. Again, <gasps> this judge, jury, executioner thing where people are just tearing this girl's life apart and diving into like her parents and her parents' voting record. And what it's, it's unbelievably alarming to watch this. I haven't heard Rachel speak on this yet. And until I actually hear this woman have a chance to speak, who am I to say any of this? Um, you know, I saw a picture of her at a sorority party five years ago, and that's it. Oh, how dare you, evil Chris Harrison, for not wanting her life to be ruined over a college party she went to three years ago and one picture coming out about it. You bastard. Luckily, Chris Harrison was here to apologize for it for the entire incident. He said, while I do not speak for Rachel Kirkconnell, my intentions were simply to ask for grace in offering her an opportunity to speak on her own behalf. What I now realize I have done is cause harm by wrongly speaking in a manner that perpetrates racism. And for that, I am so deeply sorry. Ugh, I actually started this segment thinking, I, you know, I kind of feel bad for these guys that got canceled. After reading these apologies, screw them. Congratulations! Yes, yes, yes. Congratulations to my friends, of course, Rachel and Chris. Rachel and Chris, they are. They've won the silver medal at the Cancel Culture Olympics. All right, this last one's really good. Gold medal goes to Smith College. Uh, in the midsummer of 2018, a black student at Smith College recounted distressing American tale. She was eating lunch at a dorm lounge when a janitor and a campus police officer walked over and asked her what she was doing there. All I did was be black, she wrote. It's outrageous that some people question my being at Smith College and my existence overall as a woman of color. I don't know how they... Did that exactly. The New York Times, The Washington Post, CNN picked up the story of a young female student harassed by white workers. The ACLU, which took the student's case, said she was profiled. Oh, I hate this for eating while black. Less attention was paid three months later when a law firm hired by Smith College to investigate the uh, episode found no persuasive evidence of bias. The student was determined to have eaten in a deserted dorm that had been closed for the summer. The janitor had been encouraged to notify security if he saw unauthorized people there. And the officer, like all campus police, was unarmed. So none of the things that she said happened actually happened. Uh, this is a, an elite student paying $78,000 a year roughly to go to this school, which, by the way, cannot possibly be worth it. Just so you know, you dunces. If you're that, you're that smart and you're paying $78,000 a year to go to Smith College, really? Is that really how this works? Okay, um, student workers were not supposed to use this cafeteria. Um, it was reserved for a summer camp program for young children. Um, and a, a lot of this was because they wanted to make sure it was clear and safe for the children. A janitor who was in his 60s and poor of sight was emptying garbage cans when he noticed someone in the closed lounge. All involved with the summer camp were required, required... To have state background checks and campus police had advised staff it was wisest to call security rather than confront strangers on their own. The janitor noticed uh, the it says the janitor noticed her black skin, but made no mention of that to the dispatcher. The student was in the shadows. He was not sure if he was looking at a man or a woman. She would later accuse the janitor of misgendering her. The uh, she wrote on Facebook. It's outrageous that some people question uh, people question me being at Smith and my existence overall as a woman of color. Of course, this led to the head of the university pandering and saying how terrible this was with apologies, apologies, apologies. 
Um, Miss, Mrs. Blair was the person, uh, this is the, uh, one of the people who got in trouble for this. She was born and raised and lives in Northampton with her husband, a mechanic, and makes $40,000 a year. Within days of being accused of being a racist, she said she found notes in her mailbox taped to her car window. Racist, read one. People called her at her home. You should be ashamed of yourself, a caller said. You don't deserve to live, said another. Smith College put out a short statement noting Mrs. Blair had not placed the call to security, but did not absolve her of broader responsibility. Ms. McCartney, the head of the college, uh, called her and briefly apologized, but of course did not make that apology public. The report cleared Ms. Blair altogether and found no sufficient evidence of discrimination by anyone else involved, including the janitor who called campus police. Absolutely incredible. Uh, the head of the college said the report validated the student's lived experience, notably that she felt uh, the fear she felt at the sight of the police officer. I finish it with this. This past autumn, the university furloughed Blair and the other workers, signing, uh, citing the coronavirus and the empty dorms. Ms. Blair applied for an hourly job with a local restaurant. The manager set up a Zoom interview and she said... When she saw uh, Ms. Blair, she asked, aren't you the one that was involved in that incident? Oh, yes, she was. So congratulations to all you random janitors and cafeteria workers. You've won the gold medal at the Cancel Culture Olympics, and you no longer have a job. Isn't life fair?